Through our discussion of variables and functions, we have been using Python largely as a scripting language, which means that we are essentially going to execute this one line at a time. So the program will start and it will run this line. It will see that we're calling this function, so it will run these lines, and then it will come back down and run these lines. But Python is actually what is called an object-oriented language, which means that we can create these abstract representations of things, and we can manipulate these things in a way that is not inherent to scripting languages. So today we're going to discuss classes, which is the way you create these so-called objects in programming. So let's clear our space here, and let's say we want to represent a rectangle. And we know that a rectangle has a length, and a rectangle has a width, and it has an area. And the area can be determined by multiplying length times width. Now we could represent this with a dictionary. So let's say our variable name is rectangle one, ah, let's say one, because using numbers in a variable name is not a great idea. And we'll set that equal to a dictionary, and we'll say length, we'll give it a value of three, width, and area. Okay, and that will work for referencing all of those values, but it's not really the best way to do this. It would be better if we could have an abstract representation of a rectangle. So what we're going to do is define a class. So we'll say class rectangle, and then we'll use our parentheses. Now, like the function, we can put something in here, but we'll get to that later. So for now, it's just going to be empty. And what we're going to do once we have created this class is provide it with functions. And the first and probably most important function for every object is going to be the function that initializes the object, which we will declare using def underscore underscore init underscore underscore with our parentheses. This episode is brought to you by oranges, which we will use to discuss the difference between classes and instances. So if you're familiar with Plato's philosophy of forms, this will be easier to understand. But what can we say about oranges generally? Well, hopefully they are orange, and usually they are rather spherical. But what can I say about this specific orange? I can measure it and see that it has a diameter of roughly 70 millimeters, and so this specific orange has a specific diameter, and that is the difference between a class and an instance. The class talks about objects generally, where the instance is a specific version of that general object. So when I refer to the class or an instance, that is the difference. Now we have to tell the functions of a class to reference the actual object. So this definition up here, think about it like our definition of the function. It's not actually going to represent any specific thing until we implement it. So what we are going to want to do is reference that specific implementation with the variable self. And this variable is universal to classes and refers to the actual instance of our object. That is to say, a particular rectangle rather than this abstract description of rectangles in general. And every function that we have in the class should be given the variable self. That way, anytime we run the function, we can refer to the instance of the object. After we pass it self, we can also pass it whatever variables we want. So let's say length and width. And when we initialize this object, we want to tell this init function that the length and width refer to the instance of a rectangle. So what I'm going to say is self.length equals length. So now the length of the instance is equal to what we have passed in here. And we'll say the same thing for width. And then we can say self.area equals self.length times self.width. 
Now, technically we could just say length and width since they are parameters of this function. We will end up with the same result, but in a minute it's going to be useful that we are using the instance version of the length and width rather than the parameter version of the length and width. And that will make sense in a moment. Now this init function is special in that it runs every time an instance of an object is created. So now let's come down to the main body of our program and actually create a specific rectangle. And it, again, this is abstractly what rectangles are. And now we're going to have a specific one. So I'm going to say R equals rectangle. And then I'm going to use my parentheses and I'm going to pass it the length and width that I want. So I'll say five and three. Now, although in a typical function call, we need to have a value passed in for all of the values that are parameters, within a class, the self variable is automatic. So you don't need to pass itself out here. And now down here we can say print r.area. And this is going to reference the area of this instance of a rectangle, which we calculated by multiplying the length and the width. So this should print 15. And indeed it does. Now we can also create our own custom functions within the class. So let's get rid of this here and let's create a new function. And we're going to say def calculate area. And I'm going to give another space. Now remember we have to give it self so that it can refer to the instance of the object, but we don't need to pass it any other variables because since it has self, we can reference length and width. Just to illustrate this, I'm going to say self.area equals length times width. And you should be able to intuit that since length and width have a scope that's limited to this function, it will not be able to recognize those down here. But since we're passing in self, and self refers to the instance object, we can say, self.length times self.width. Now, unlike this init function, which runs automatically when I create an instance of an object, this function does not run automatically. So we actually have to tell the program to run it. And a good time to run this one would be within the initialization. So let's just say self.calculate area. We'll save that, we'll run it, and again we get 15. So that is a basic introduction to using classes in Python. And the important thing to remember is that your definition of the class is a abstract description of what an object is, whereas your use of it in the main body is called an instance or a particular version of the thing. So while we say that Okay, a rectangle is something that has length, width, and area down here. This particular rectangle has a length and width of three. And since we need to refer to the particular one, we use this self variable. Now classes get much more complex than this, but this video is only intended to briefly introduce you to the idea of a class. And in the next lesson, we're going to work with this class to make it more useful. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my developer diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.